chat. My name is Alexander Osekwa. I'm impossible from Ghana. You can call me possible for short. In our previous lecture, we look at how to derive the lump sum tax multiplier, whereby transfer payment has not been given. We are saying that transfer payment sometimes could be given, and sometimes we can also decide not to give you that. But it doesn't affect the uh, multiplier or the calculation or the computation of the multiplier. I hope it makes sense. Now, it is not always that we give you the transfer payments, right? Good. Now, in the case whereby the transfer payment is not given, we have looked at how to derive the tax multiplier. Today, we are going to look at deriving how to derive the lump sum tax multiplier when transfer payment is given. Now, listen to me very careful. If you are deriving the lump sum tax multiplier when the transfer payment is given, it is not difficult. It is the same as um, the lump sum tax multiplier when the transfer payment is not given. Now, listen to me very careful. At the end of the computation, you will get to know that the transfer payment has no effect on the derive or um, on the process of deriving the um, multiplier. I hope it makes sense. Good. So the transfer payment has nothing to do with the multiplier. With the multiplier, right? Good. So if you are deriving the multiplier, all what we have to look at is whether we are working with lump sum tax or we are working with we are working with proportionate tax. I hope it makes sense. We are going straight away to the board and then we do the computation and from there you get to know that transfer payment that, um, has no effect on the um, derivation of the multiplier. I hope it makes sense. Now from our previous lectures, we have gotten to know that the aggregate expenditure is equal to consumption plus investment plus government spending. And I've told you that this is a um, two-sector economy, right? It's like we are, we are working within a closed economy whereby there is the government intervention, right? Good. Now, aggregate expenditure is equal to this. But consumption, but, but consumption C is equal to A plus BYD, right? And we know BYD, we know YD, disposable income to be equal to income minus tax. Now we are saying that when transfer payment is given, so if transfer payment is part, then plus transfer payment, plus transfer payment. I hope it makes sense. Good. So if it is, um, if, if transfer payment is part, you are going to add it to it. I hope it makes sense. Nice one. So this is what we are going to get. Consumption here. So consumption, new consumption curve or function is going to be A, a plus B Y minus T plus T R, right? If you decide to expand this one, if you try to expand this one, you are going to get consumption equal to A plus B Y plus minus B Y minus B T plus B T R. B T R. I hope it makes sense. Nice one. So we can go and put everything here because yes, consumption. We can come and put everything here. I hope it makes sense. Nice one. So our new aggregate expenditure function is going to be like this. Let me use blue marker. So aggregate expenditure is going to be like this. C and C is the whole of this. So you're going to get A plus B Y minus B T plus B T R then plus investment plus government spending plus investment plus government spending i hope it makes sense now if you look at this one very well we could see that we have substituted the consumption the the the, the component for the consumption in the aggregate expenditure function right but from our previous discussion we realized that at equilibrium at equilibrium Aggregate expenditure is equal to income or output. I hope it makes sense. So at equilibrium, at equilibrium, at equilibrium, at equilibrium, aggregate expenditure is equal to income. Aggregate expenditure is equal to income or output. So having gotten to know that aggregate expenditure is equal to 
output, then we can substitute the uh, aggregate expenditure with income or output. I hope it makes sense. So we are going to get income equal to A plus BY minus BT plus BTR plus I plus government spending. I hope it makes sense. This is what you are going to get. Now, once you have gotten this one, the next one is the grouping of like terms. So we are going to bring all the Y here. So Y, this Y will come to minus BY equal to A minus BT plus BTR plus investment plus government spending, right? Now, Y and Y, the Y is the common factor, right? So we are going to bring the Y out minus 1 minus B equal to A minus BT plus BTR plus investment plus government spending. Now, we could see that, we could see that um, Y minus B, right? 1 minus B in the bracket, we can divide both sides by it right mm -hmm. so we can divide so we can divide through by one minus b one y we so we can divide through by one minus b one minus b so dividing through by one minus b you're going to get one minus b one minus b this one cancel this so y is equal to one minus b into bracket a minus bt plus btr plus investment plus government spending right good now this is what so having gotten this one now listen to me very careful multiplier we are saying a change that occurs in this as a result of change in this multiply is a change now, assuming um, we have gotten a question, the question says that what will be the effect if any of these components changes? What will be the effect on the equilibrium income? If any of these components, autonomous components, changes, what will be the effect on the equilibrium national income? Assuming you have gotten a question like that, this is how you are going to do it. I hope it makes sense. If any of these components changes, automatically the national income or the output is going to change so as soon as you hear a question that if any of these components changes what will be the effect on the equilibrium national income this is how you're going to do it you're going to take a change of both sides right good now listen to me very careful this one will be will be understood better when you reach the application of the multiplier the application of the multiplier so you just follow it like that okay so change of this you're going to get change of income equal to now before then we are getting to know that the general multiplier the general multiplier when transfer payment is included is also one over one minus b or one over marginal propensity to save because one minus b this marginal propensity to consume marginal propensity to consume so if one minus marginal propensity to consume um if we are trying to um, subtract major propensity to consume from one, you are going to get major propensity to save. This major propensity to consume, one minus major propensity to consume, will give us major propensity to save from lesson eight. Lesson eight, that's how it is. So, this is the general matter. So, we could, we could say that if we add transfer payment to it, we are going to get the same thing as when we didn't add what transfer payment to it. I hope it makes sense. So whether transfer payment is part or it is not part, it doesn't cause any change on the multiplier or the general multiplier, right? So listen to me very carefully. We use transfer payment and use proportionate tax, right? If you're adding the rest of the way to it, then that an import also will affect the multiplier. But once we are not working with an open economy and we are working with closed economy, we focus on... Um, we focus on the trans, um, the lump sum tax and the proportionate tax. These are the only two, uh, the only components that can change the multiplier. I hope it makes sense. 
but the transfer payment does not change it. If you are trying to take a change of it, you are going to get change of income equal to equal to one over one minus b into bracket change of everything in the bracket. I hope it makes sense. You get change in a b. Look at this one. Is b change in t? You see it plus b change in t r. Then plus change in I plus change in G. I hope it makes sense. Then you close it. Now look at it. If the question asks you when you read the application, understand. So anyway, you just pick it like that. So picking them individually, if you decide to pick them individually, the tax multiplier, tax multiplier. Is equal to tax multiplier is equal to multiplier equal to one over one minus b tax then you come and pick this this is the tax component one over one minus b tax multiplier times one b this one this is a tax multiplier this is the tax multiplier tax multiplier tax this is the tax multiplier. Now, if they ask you to calculate for the transfer payment multiplier, transfer payment multiplier, K equal to, this one is constant. This one is constant. So you get one over one minus B. Transfer payment multiplier. Now the tax multiplier, don't be confused. Once here is minus B, minus B. Once here is minus B. If you are writing it, you are going to get minus b over 1 minus b. Don't be confused. It's the same thing because we are, we are bringing this one here. This one times this, it will come here. Then times change in t. I hope it makes sense. It's the same thing. We have shifted this one to this aspect or this part. I hope it makes sense. So it's the same thing. And also, maybe one. So, so, tax multiplier. Is going to be like this minus b over the marginal propensity to save or one minus b times this and then transfer payments we pick everything from here here transfer payments is b times change in transfer payment have you seen it uh -huh. the b is here fine you can also let it be b it could also be like this b then here becomes 1 over. It's the same thing. Right? Good. But it is not nice in mass. That's why I'm writing it like this. B over this. That's how it is. Then the transfer payment multiplier. And the investment multiplier. Investment is here. So 1 over 1 over 1 minus B. Which is marginal propensity to save. Times change in investment. We give investment multiplier. And here that's how it is. I hope it makes sense. So, in our next lex uh, lesson or lecture, in our next lecture, we are going to look at how to derive the proportionate tax multiplier. Once again, my name is Alexander Osekwa, I'm a possible from Ghana. Bye-bye.